So, hi, my name is Gerdy, Gerdy Verboert. I'm a coach at daregreatlycoaching.com and I coach people who want some help discovering what their core values are, what is truly important to them and how they can use that to live a life true to themselves, how they can shape that life and stop living a life as others expect of them. And I just did this entire video without starting the broadcast, so I'm doing it again. Um, and I'm talking to you about how important it is that we watch the language we use, how powerful the words we use in our conversations with ourselves are, and how they uh, influence our state, our well-being. And I was reminded of this when I was listening to um, Tony Robbins earlier today. And I've been listening to his program, The Edge. I found it on uh, Spotify. I can recommend it if, you, uh, if you've got Spotify, go over there and find it. It's really good. But anyways, he was talking about something that is, he's really passionate about, how we use language and especially how we use language with ourselves. Now, I learned this many, many years ago when I did a course in neurolinguistic programming or NLP. And go Google it if you want to find out more about that. But as with Tony Robbins, in NLP2 language is incredibly important. And I was rather skeptical about this whole concept of how language influences what we do and how we do things and how we feel. So I decided to test it out. And back then I used to play a whole lot of golf. I, I, and um, I had a terrible draw. And a draw is when you hit the ball and it takes an incredibly incredible turn to the left where it is not supposed to go because I always intended to hit the ball straight, to go straight ahead. And when I started paying attention to the language that I was using when I was hitting that ball and it was veering off to the left, that's my left, I know it's your right, but still, um, I found that I was telling myself not to look up when I hit the ball. So listen carefully. What I used to say to myself was, Gerdy, don't look up. Now, perhaps you've got kids or you've got little nieces and nephews or you work with kids. What happens when you have a little kid and you tell it not to run or not to touch something? What happens? Exactly. What happens is um, they touch, they run, they do exactly that one thing that you don't want them to do. If you don't want them to do something, tell them what it is that you want them to do. Keep your hands away from that. Walk calmly, that kind of thing. So what I started doing when I was teeing up the ball and getting myself ready to hit it in the direction of the hole where it was supposed to go, I started telling myself to keep my eye at the, at the point where the ball had been. So instead of doing this, preparing myself, telling myself, Gerdy, do not look up, make the swing and then do this, which always resulted in a ball that was going way to the left. I started doing this, Gerdy, keep your head down, look at the tee, what happened to the tee? And I hit the ball and I stayed like this which means that the ball could go straight. The only advantage, and there was the only one disadvantage to my starting to hit, to hit the ball straight. Golfing in the Netherlands is quite expensive and having the ball go all over the place meant I got to see quite a bit, a lot actually, of the course. When I started to hit the ball straight, I played the course with a lot less, a, a lot less strikes, which was good but I didn't see as much of the course as I used to. So, you know, there's a trade-off. But why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all this because it works the same way in life. It's not just golf or any kind of other sport that you do where, you, where it helps to tell yourself what you want to be doing and not what you don't want to be doing. It's the same in life. So when I found that it actually worked that way, I started taking out the negatives in the language, in the stories I was telling myself in my head, in the conversations I was having in my head. And I found it worked the same way. So whenever I found myself 
and telling myself I couldn't do something, I didn't want to do something, um, I, I shouldn't, you know, all those knots that go on in your head that you're perhaps not even aware of, I started be becoming aware of how many times I use those words. I use the word not in a sentence. And I started taking them out. And that made a huge difference in the way I feel, in the way I act, in the way, in everything, really. So, if you, when you start, not if, when you start look, uh, paying attention to the words you're using in your head, in the conversations you have with yourself, stop yourself when you find yourself using negatives. And start replacing those sentences with the negatives in them with sensitive sentences with positives. You'll find it makes a an enormous difference in the way you feel and uh, your state of well-being, but also in the results you're getting. It's similar to that time when you bought your first car. You know, my my first proper car, really proper car, brand new car was a. Uh, Ford Escort, bright red. I never noticed so many bright red Ford Escorts uh, as I did when I ordered that car. It's going to be the same way when you start paying attention to your language. Start paying attention to the language, skip the negatives, put in the positives, and it'll make your life at the beginning maybe a little bit better, but you'll find yourself getting into a better state. So I hope this helps. I um, I'll be back hopefully this Thursday. Uh, hopefully the weather will be so good that I can be outside somewhere and uh, show you the mountains because hiking season has started. But until then, my name is Gerrit Verwoerd. You can find me at daregreatlycoaching.com. And as always, I hope you have, uh, this is useful and I wish you go there greatly. Have a great one, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.